Order, order. This is Digital Culture Media Sports Selection. This is our third panel today on racism in Yorkshire. We are joined by Tom Harrison, Chief Executive of the ECB, and by three other representatives from the ECB, Kate Miller, Mina Botros, and Alan Dickinson. Thank you very much for joining us today, Tom, Kate, Mina, and Alan. Uh, Tom, you heard what uh, Mr Hatton said in terms of uh, the ECB stepping away from this process. Um, why is it you let Yorkshire deal with this? They were clearly either incompetent or, frankly, they didn't want to deal with it in any sort of way. So why didn't you step up to the plate and deal with this? Good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, can I just say, uh, firstly, we've, we've obviously s uh, sat and listened to uh, Azim Rafiq's testimony this morning, and I think we've all been uh, pretty moved by it, uh, to say the least. I think it's, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's brought forward a, a, a lot of emotions, um, and uh, I'm sure that the, the panel share that. So I just wanted to commend Azim's bravery and... Uh, um, we have Alan here from the board, um, representative of the board, who will also just like to read a short statement, if that's all right. Uh, uh, no, Chair. it's not all right, I'm afraid. Mr okay. Harrison, we've got limited time. Could you please answer the question? Sure. Um, look, the reason why um, we didn't step into this uh, it, it, investigation right at the start is because of the complex role that the ECB plays in relation to uh, being national governing body. And we've sent the, the, the panel a... a a sheet of that uh, explaining that role. We are the national governing body, we are the promoter, we are also the regulator. And on regulatory matters, it is, uh, it is normal practice for first class counties uh, to take on investigations uh, in, that, they want to, that they want to take on uh, at their will. Uh, it is then for the regulator, in other words the ECB, to sit in judgment of that uh, investigation and if need be run a, uh, an additional investigation on top. On this occasion our pastor Mr Botros who is our head of legal and integrity was int intensely involved in the uh, negotiations at the time. Uh, Yorkshire were very clear that they wanted to run this investigation themselves. There was an offer put to the ECB about whether we wanted to So, so just to clarify that so who was it at Yorkshire that said to the ECB that they wanted themselves to deal with this investigation? Can you name the names, please? Yeah, can I? Yes, of course, thank, thank you. you. It, it was the chair of Yorkshire, Mr Hutton, who stated that he wanted the uh, international law firm to carry out this investigation. And the, uh, so he's just lied to us? He's just lied to us, is that right? The, the question that was put to the ECB was... Would you uh, put someone? Would you be? Uh, would you want to put someone from the ECB on the panel right. that would come to the conclusions on the findings? And the ECB said that, given it's a Yorkshire investigation, it would not be appropriate to have an ECB person on the panel coming to the findings because we have a role to play as a regulator and we will be carrying out our own investigation. And if Yorkshire will be carrying out that investigation first, then that needs to conclude. So, so sorry, just cut, cut you. He did ask you to put someone on the panel of the investigation. But they were, they, they were, when they said that they wanted you to investigate, was he truthful or was he untruthful? My, my, to my knowledge, Mr Hutton asked us to put someone on the panel in relation to the investigation that Yorkshire were yes, carrying but out. The, the, the question is very simple. When he stated to this committee in the last session that he had asked you to take on the investigation, it's very different to whether or not you're sitting on a panel or not. What is the truth? It, Mr. I, sorry, it may be that Mr. Watmore had discussions uh, as the chair at the time on that best basis, but I can tell you that when it came to our regulatory department and in terms of the, the role that we uh, were asked to play, it was very clearly, do we or do we not want to partner on the investigation with Yorkshire County Cricket Club? At that point, we took the very clear decision that we would not partner with Yorkshire. We would wait for them to uh, carry out their investigation mm. and then take steps post the investigation. Because that was the interpretation. We, uh, we, we had discussions over this matter ourselves, offline, so to speak. And that was what I was told by your organisation. So I'm a little bit perplexed precisely where partnering actually means taking on the investigation. What I'd like you to do, please, is I would like please, to supply to this committee all correspondence in relation to that decision as to whether or not it would be Yorkshire who took, whether or not it was Yorkshire who requested that they take the lead with this inquiry, that it was a Yorkshire inquiry, on whether or not actually it was them requesting just a member, you to supply a panel member. Happy Would you be able to do that? Yes, of course. Thank you, thank you. Because I have to say, pretty extraordinary if that is the, uh, the line which uh, 
has been taken with us today if that is proven to have not been true in that respect. So that's pretty, pretty extraordinary. Um, so why is it different for Essex? Um, again, uh, the, I think we've all learnt some very key lessons from this experience and uh, indeed the mishandling of uh, mm. this investigation. Uh, re reforming our governance process, reforming our regulatory process has happened all the time. Right? We're always trying to get better and we're always trying to be more thorough uh, and better at how so we do So what were you things. saying so, then, Mr. Harrison? It's effectively you decided that you would go by the rules when it comes to Yorkshire but with Essex, because of some bad publicity, you basically wouldn't go with those. You'd, you'd short circuit that, despite the fact that we know from the Fletcher report that Yorkshire has a long history of basically not involving other communities and, frankly, racism. No, I think I don't think that is a fair characterisation. What situation. is a fair characterisation, and why Essex and not oh, Yorkshire? Mina, would you like to just um, explain it from your perspective? Yeah, yes, thank you. So, in, in relation to Essex, we started our regulatory investigation at a time when Essex were not conducting an investigation, so there was no investigation to wait for. With, with Yorkshire, as we just set out, there was a desire from Yorkshire to carry out this investigation led by the international law firm, as you're aware, and we were told that that would be... Are they a law to themselves, effectively Yorkshire? in the regulatory system, because it seems to be as if, frankly, that you know, they had a free pass on this until they screwed up. Whereas Essex, because they haven't launched the investigation, because basically they were in communication with you throughout the entire process, as I so well know, they then basically are allowed, then basically you come in and you, you, you circumnavigate it, you short circuit it and carry out your role as a regulator. It seems to me as if Yorkshire was too big to, to, be, to be pulled up about things like this. Is that fair? Yeah. If, if, if I may, um, in, in relation to Yorkshire, what happened was we were told that they wished to investigate this. They were going to commission an independent uh, international law firm to carry this out, so that it would be completed within three months. That a the law firm, firm that Mr Hutton used to work for? Yes, and okay. that the, uh, the findings would be published and that they, would, they committed to carrying out the recommendations from that. So based on those commitments from Yorkshire... Neither of which they did. Correct, and, yeah. that, and, and, and the unacceptable way that has been, it has been handled uh, is, is a big problem here. Uh, but in September 2020, when we were given those commitments, we, were, uh, we, we therefore stated that we will not start our regulatory investigation until that period mm. had concluded and they had come to the fines. But we were clear that we would then be in conducting our investigation regardless of that. With, with Essex, uh, we, when, we, when I became aware of the... Uh, the allegations that have been made, uh, we then immediately started our regulatory process. There was no correspondence with Essex. Will you do this every time in the future? Because this, I mean, it, it's just been extraordinary that Yorkshire were allowed to effectively construct a report which was, was never meant for the light of day because it was so messed up. And I actually argue probably deliberately so. And then effectively that means that they, they almost could get away with, frankly, burying Mr Rafiq's quite telling, pertinent, and quite obviously true evidence uh, in many instances. Yeah. Why is it that you, that the game allows a club, no matter how big, to effectively behave in that fashion? Your role as a regulator, surely from this moment onwards, should be ensure that no club ever again performs in the way in which Yorkshire has performed over this. Well, I completely agree with that sentiment, uh, Chair, and uh, I, would, I would just add the following, that the, the reason why Yorkshire were allowed to undergo this investigation is because up to that point it was fairly normal practice for first class counties to run their own regulatory process and then for ECB as the, over uh, as the regulator of the entire game uh, to effectively sit in judgment of that investigation done internally. We have learnt lessons through this process and uh, the thing that obviously that is incredibly hurtful is not only the, the fact that it has been handled so badly but indeed the fact that it's taken so long for the investigation uh, to be published, uh, indeed sent to the ECB even, which took months for us to get copies of it. So mm. we've got uh, a litany of, uh, of, of, uh, of issues to deal with uh, that uh, will help inform our regulated processes going forward. Okay. David Green? Just one point about the overall process, and, and thank you for the, the helpful document. The ECB's basic role is to promote the game including the county game. One of its other roles is to regulate the game. Yeah. In a situation like this where you have an inquiry that basically is trying to hide 
as it were, not to look under the stones enough. Uh, isn't there an inherent conflict of interest in that? Shouldn't the regulatory function be in a different body than the promotional function? Because it's perfectly clear that in instances like this, they conflict. It's more difficult to sell cricket now than it was a couple of months ago because of this. Yeah. And you, you rightly point out that there is a complex role there, both playing national governing body promoter um, as, well as, as well as regulator. I think it brings some significant advantages to us as a sport as well to have everything um, under one roof in, in, indeed uh, and that includes dealing with, with government uh, and operating as a single sport, single with one voice. And we do have processes which keep the independence of the regulatory uh, operation in place. But Mina, perhaps you can give a little bit more perspective on that, given how it works. Absolutely. Uh, you're, you're right that there is that conflict, or at least potential conflict, depending on the circumstances. And the ECB recognises that, and the ECB's put in place structures to deal with that issue. So. Uh, in relation to regulatory matters, there is a regulatory committee uh, which is chaired by an independent uh, chair and independent individuals on there with relevant experience. And they oversee regulatory process, including cases such as this and the prosecution of cases, so that there is that separation between the regulatory arm and the promoter, as you state. And they hold the ECB to account in carrying out that role. Sorry, who holds the ECB to account? The, 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 the Independent Regulatory Committee. And who, who appoints the Independent Regulatory Committee? The, the ECB. They are, they, are chaired, they are chaired by an independent individual and they have independents on there who uh, make uh, decisions in relation to cases. Yeah, I, mean, I would make the, the fair observation at the moment that maybe Parliament isn't the institution best uh, equipped to advise people uh, on how to regulate themselves. Um, but nevertheless, um, I, I, I can only suggest you, you have a look at that. An independent panel that you appoint that then holds you to account seems a bit circular, to put it as politely as I can. I think that this, this might be a, a structural weakness in, in the process. I think it's still quite a few steps. Julia? Yeah, it, it sounds a bit like a wild west this to me, to be honest. Um, I mean, do you think that's appropriate that you appoint the committee who actually is in supposed to be independent of you? We rely on the independence of those individuals. No, do you think it's appropriate? That is the structure we have in place. In do, order for the, do you think that's an appropriate system? I believe that it, it works and that the ECB is carrying out that so role. So you've got it? no idea whether it's appropriate. Do you it, think it's an appropriate system? Well, I think in the absence of a better system, it's, uh, it, it, it works. And it, look, we've... The, if we look at the if you look at the personnel on our independent regulatory committee, that's not it is really, that is not really the issue. Right. To me, it does not sound like an appropriate system. In fact, it sounds like an absolute system that is open to abuse. But you cannot answer the question. It's it's appalling. So you it, it, you said earlier um, that you you knew that um, uh, Mr. Hutton used to work for this independent law international law firm that was doing the inquiry into what was going on in Yorkshire. Did you know that before the uh, investigation started or afterwards? So uh, we were informed in early September that Mr Hutton would be uh, using that law firm. Um, I, I wasn't aware of that before it, 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 it came to light. I don't recall at which point exactly I was aware of that, but it was Yorkshire who were going to be appointing um, that, that firm. So at the point that you became aware of it, did you at any point question that that might not be an appropriate company to do that? We were, we were conscious of our role um, in that we were going to be carrying out a regulatory process in relation to this, both in terms of the allegations but also Yorkshire's handling of the matter and therefore it was not appropriate for us to input into how they carried out that investigation. So we didn't want to therefore tell them who, who to have on their panels, for example. No, but it's not about telling them who to have on the panel. It's about saying to them, as a, a critical friend, you would, I would suggest, that it would not look right having a company that the, that the person, Mr Hutton, used to work for, running this inquiry. At no point did you think that was a sensible thing to put forward? 
I, I agree with the point you're making. It's, it's, it's not, as you, as you put it, a good, a good look. However, we've got to be conscious that we can't take small steps in intervening in that process because we but have to respect... it wouldn't be intervening, would it? It would just be simply saying this would not look good. But would, Mr Harrison, did you not think of suggesting that? Well, as I said, the ECB has to be independent of the... You know, if we're going to be overlooking and uh, sitting in judgment of a process and we are prepared to make an intervention into one part of the process but not another, but I don't not, think that is an independent it's really, regulator. It's not really an intervention. It's a, it's a passing comment. Have you actually, to say to somebody, have you thought about how this looks? That isn't really intervening. Well, I can't confirm that there weren't offline comments made to uh, that. I'm, I'm, I certainly didn't raise it. It is, as, as Chief Executive, did not raise it. The regulatory function needs to sit outside the operational function for obvious reasons, and some of those have been raised already. But we need to make sure that uh, when we are able to sit in judgment of an investigation, it is having been independent all the way through the process. So you said, uh, somebody said, I can't remember which one of you said, but one of you said that, um, that it was normal practice, I think it was you, Mr Harrison, actually, yeah. that clubs investigate, carry out their own investigations. And yet, it wasn't normal practice for Essex to carry out their own investigation. No, that's... Uh, the, Lina, do you want to explain? My understanding is that Essex will be carrying out an investigation now. My point was that the time we started our regulatory investigation, and this was prior to it coming into the public domain last week, prior to the resignation that was uh, covered last week in the media, there, was, there wasn't an Essex investigation. Um, so... so the, the standard practice is that if there is one, uh, we will wait for that to conclude. If there isn't one, then we will commence straight away. So at the very least, as an outsider, and I'm not a cricket person, but looking at this, it's very cloudy. And as I say, it, you know, you could describe this as the Wild West, the way this is what we've heard this morning. Do you think the ECB is fit for purpose? Yes, I do. I think uh, we are learning a lesson here about... And what lesson uh, are you learning, Mr Harrison? Well, I think we've got a long way to go to fulfil our, um, our ambition to make cricket a game for everyone. That is something that uh, ever since I have done this job, I've tried to uh, ensure that the game is providing opportunities to more people in more, from more different backgrounds uh, to come and take part and in you, this game. And you actually you get funding from the EHRC to address equalities issues. How are you using that money? What are you actually doing to address those issues? Kate, can I pass to you to take on some of this? Yeah, um, we received, received funding from, from many bodies, um, Sport England being one of them as well, to drive diversity initiatives across the game. Um, the, there's quite a lot that we've initiated. The ICEC, the Independent Commission for Equity in Sport, is something, Equity in Cricket, um, was conceived in November 2020 and launched in March 2021. Their remit is to explore issues around race, gender and class within cricket at the moment. Cindy Butts, who... I'm sure is known to, to many of the committee as the chair of the ICEC. So that is one of the initiatives, the anti-discrimination code, which we launched at the beginning of this season, uh, has rolled out across the game. And it means that everyone that sits within the ECB's jurisdiction is now um, holding to new standards around anti-discrimination. We had elements... And, and how are you holding people to account on that as to whether people are actually doing this? If I can, Alan, if you could pick up around some of the ways that we hold our stakeholders to account. There are, there are many ways... There's our regulatory process. You're not hearing all of this. Pass questions around to one another. You answer the question, or the chief executive answers the question. Sure. So, if you're not capable of answering that side, um, the question, the chief executive can answer. Yeah. So the stakeholders are held to account through either through our regulatory process, um, and that can include fines, bans if your players or those involved. And have you done any of those things? Uh, any yes, of those things? So. Very recently, we've taken the steps. So as soon as we uh, were aware of the decision uh, and we've been uh, informed of the decision about Yorkshire uh, on the uh, late October, we had an instantaneous board meeting um, to decide what sanctions we would bring to bear against Yorkshire, having apologised uh, uh, to Azim for the uh, extensive racist behaviour he'd been subject to whilst a player at Yorkshire. The subsequent decision not to discipline internally uh, led to us taking immediate steps to sanction Yorkshire County Cricket Club uh, with the full kind of weight of what we have at our disposal and that is, um, you know, uh, first of all we provide funding to all first class counties um, but we also provide matches and uh, test match and international match allocations is one of the major revenue streams for first class counties. 
But so we have immediately taken steps to suspend Yorkshire uh, from being a host of international cricket. But that hasn't cricket. come about through your processes, has it? Yeah, uh, well, it that is, hasn't it, come it, to light through the processes that you've instigated. So th those are processes we have lots of processes. There is a, a major match allocation process. There no, is then what, a stage I, what Ms. Ms Miller was talking about, engaging with stakeholders, the other things she mentioned, what has come to light hasn't come through anything you were doing. I accept you've taken action as a result of what's come out. I think we've taken actions things. before that as well. Right. I think through That's the process of... Yeah. So we were talking a little earlier about um, the impacts of the Black Lives Matter movement across cricket. and. Uh, um, we, as a, as a result of that, did our own exercise within the ECB, which I led personally to hear the experiences of a predominantly uh, black British cricketers through uh, uh, over the course of cricket careers, dating back sometimes to the 90s, um, uh, and to ask them what... And that led to the, uh, the instigation and the launch of, in November 2020, uh, we launched that there would be an independent commission for equity in cricket. That subsequently launched in March this year, and uh, we've talked a little bit about that. We have got the independent board, which has been in place since 2018. Uh, since we put that in place, it's a fully independent board overseeing all of cricket in this country, and that is going some way beyond the Sport England Governance Code. Uh, we've revised and revamped our anti-discrimination code, which uh, uh, we put into, which now covers uh, all players and administrators through the game of cricket in this country. Uh, we've got diversity standards being applied through the game. We've got an all-game meeting later this week. Uh, where we will be uh, launching... Can I just ask, you've, you've said, you've listed a whole things, Ben, but I come back to how do you know these things are being adhered to? Right. Because that seems to be where the breakdown here is from what you're doing as an organisation. And actually, I, I do feel that uh, the ECB have been uh, aware of uh, the importance of this agenda, not just racism, I think the whole point of discrimination, equity... Diversity and inclusion has been a, a if you look at our, uh, our strategy document, Inspiring Generations, it has EDI at its heart, understanding and, and acting against discrimination at its heart. Uh, what we have struggled with is, is, is getting the, our first class game to, to wake up to the same extent. And that is the point, that is, we are at that stage now where I think we are if not uh, already in an emergency, then we are approaching one. Uh, and uh, I think uh, to reflect some of the really interesting comments that Azim has made this morning, it is very refreshing that even having been through the experiences he's been through, he's willing to help us, to work with us, uh, to be a leader, uh, to help us uh, ensure that these reforms are taken uh, through the game quickly uh, and it's action, not words, that follows. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, you asked the question as to whether ECB was fit for purpose, and I would strongly assert that it is. But can I just comment on some of the issues that you've raised, please, if I may? Um, we do have had a long-standing desire, which started very much from when Tom joined uh, the ECB as Chief Executive, that we wanted to make the game a game for everyone. There's a lot of work involved. Uh, and a lot of initiatives have been taken. Part of the process that we have today is to set up what are called county partnership agreements with each of the first class counties by which we regularly assess, sit down with them as to whether they are making the appropriate strides towards good governance and good standards throughout their counties. And those are things where we can check on a regular basis how people are doing. Now I have no doubt, and I can only apologise to uh, Azim Rafiq and his family for the horrendous time he has gone through, not just when it happened, but subsequently as well. Um, but I want to leave you in no doubt that the game is absolutely filled with the determination to resolve the issue of race in cricket. Yeah, no, I would make that. It's, it's, it's all very good to apologise, Mr Rafiq. We've had a lot of apologies to him. What about the thousands of Asian kids, basically, who, who enter the game and then chucked out the other side and they do not actually make it or, you know, disproportionately. Uh, it's all very good talking about initiatives and EDIs and banding words around, but the point of the matter is there's 85% of kids at Bradford Park Nets of South Asian background and yet we have four uh, British-born Asians representing Yorkshire uh, in the last decade. What on earth is going on? You can't just say, well, the game is doing this, the game is doing that, because clearly you're failing. 
Well, I, I, I think we have to do better, but I do not believe that the, the evidence uh, is all bad in that space. I think we have got... It's actually got um, worse. The evidence well, has got worse in this participation. Okay, we, we I accept that uh, there is an awful lot more work to do here. And I also believe that we've got uh, signs in different parts of the country where there are really, really good uh, elements of best practice happening here. And it's not uh, fair to say that that is symptomatic of the, of the entire country. Um, we know that we've got Just more in the biggest county, with the most championships, with the most England players, just the, the biggest mass participation sporting club, I believe, in, in the UK. That just that one is the one that's the problem. No, uh, I'm not saying that. I think that we, uh, and I'm not refusing any of the, the evidence, by the way, I'm suggesting that uh, there's a lot more work to do and uh, that the, the policies that we have put in place, be that uh, putting in place 1,200 female South Asian activators uh, to help getting, uh, to get young females to play cricket in parts of the country where we previously haven't, uh, urban cricket centres that we're opening up around the country in parts of the, in, in parts of uh, the uh, environment okay. where we Th don't Thank you. We're, we're going to move on to Clive Efford, then Kevin Brennan. Clive Efford. Uh, 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 thank you, um, and thank you for coming to give your evidence. Uh, you, you sent around a note to us saying combating racism and making cricket inclusive and accessible, which is, is very helpful. And, it, and you've set up a, an independent commission under, under Cindy Butts. That's the first point you make. What are you hoping to learn that we don't already know from that, in, that uh, uh, a commission? Yeah, I'm happy to take it. And we obviously want to know what is going on around the country and we want evidence. Why don't you know? For goodness sake, come on. We will not know everything. We will not know the people who, like uh, Azim, have perhaps felt unable to disclose what has been happening to them. So we have called that the Commission has called for evidence and it's called now. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the output of that Commission is. Now, you cannot simply say, we know what the answer is and we will go and deal with it. That's part of it, but we must get evidence from around the country. We need to set up the whistleblowing lines that um, uh, Lord Patel has set up and get all the feedback we possibly can so that we know that we understand the full extent of the problem. If I may, Mr. Efford, just to follow up on that, we know uh, there is mistrust of administrators and organisations like ours. Um, Tom did a lot of listening work after the Black Lives Matter movement and George Floyd's murder, and we know that people do struggle to come forward. What we did want to do is try and set up an independent body who could hold us to account, report back to us, and share independent findings that we can then share with the game. I think it's clear that we haven't gone far or fast enough. We do want to learn and listen to other people. And to Azim's earlier, earlier point, he requested that we listen. He requested that we did a good, strong listening exercise. And you know, I'm pleased that the ICEC is there and that they can support us in doing that work. I think there is more for us to learn. Okay, so, so you, what your second point in the note you've sent to us, it says you've, uh, you, you've introduced a game-wide anti-discrimination <coughs> code. When did you introduce that code? That was initiated at the start of this season, so we already had some anti-discrimination references within our code and that hardened it and allow, allowed all those that sit within our jurisdiction to, to fall under that rule. It allowed us effectively to have more powers and to be able to help hold people account, prosecute. And what inspired you to, you know, felt you, at that moment in time you needed a, an anti-discrimination, a new anti-discrimination code, because presumably you, you weren't, uh, you didn't, didn't, you had one before that, because uh, you know, it would be falling down on your duties if you didn't have one, so why did you need to revise it? There, there were elements of anti-discrimination, there wasn't a hard explicit anti-discrimination code, previously you, you would be charged with bringing the game into disrepute, and from what we had heard, it felt necessary for us to be extremely explicit and initiate a, a fuller, harder anti-discrimination code. Now, the, the, the Fletcher report that I referred to earlier on, which I, I interpret as, a, as an expose of racism in Yorkshire cricket, but uh, others may take a different view, um, that uh, um, um, it clearly exposed the, the lack of opportunity for uh, South Asian cricketers in Yorkshire cricket. Uh, what did the ECB do about that? Um, there's been a huge amount that we've done broadly, so our, our strategy inspiring generations, we began to create, create that in 2014. That addresses um, many inclusion initiatives across the game from, from all um, underrepresented groups, not specifically just um, British South Asian audiences. We have a dedicated South Asian action plan that we're delivering against um, and we're seeing positive numbers. We talked earlier on about 
I, I, you know, I agree. I agree with your thoughts around representation in England teams, but we've seen um, an increase of seven to 20, of seven percent to twenty eight percent of ethnicity in our boys' pathway, so that that they are starting to work. We are soon starting to see data improvements. But, there. but, but doesn't the statistics show that you're more likely to represent England if you come from a public school than if you're from an ethnic minority background? I think the data says that you're more likely to represent England if you go to public school in any sport. But I agree that it is an issue in cricket. I don't yes. think that was held up in football, but never mind. But but. Uh, so, so, so can I ask you as well, uh, 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 you know, if I went and looked at the, at the data, um, the Fletcher report was 2014, quite a detailed report. Um, uh, the previous chair wasn't aware of the, the, the Fletcher report, which is, was surprising. Uh, uh, but but uh, um, if I was to go and look at the statistics from 2014 to now, what difference would I find? Um, you would see, if I, if I may, um, you would see huge work across our coaching base and improvement of underrepresentation. Yeah, you've said that, but where is the representation at senior level? Where is it? Th 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 this is why we're here. Yeah. Because th th we are getting lots of participation. Azim said it himself. We're getting lots of participation at grassroots level. Lots of young people are playing cricket uh, from the South Asian community. The, the issue we're here for confronting is that they're not getting uh, through to the, the, the elite uh, uh, at the higher levels of, of, of cricket in Yorkshire, as we're looking at today. But is that, uh, you know, I, what, from what we've heard, we, if we looked anywhere across the, the, the cricketing uh, 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 hierarchy, we would see the same in, uh, in, other, in other counties. So why haven't we seen that change? Well, I, th I think uh, we're drilling into some of the real issues that have been brought around uh, through Azim's testimony and uh, the work that, uh, uh, that's that been done through the report uh, and indeed will follow through through the ECB investigation which is, which is happening now. But um, I think ultimately we need to start uh, to look at dressing room culture through the country and uh, indeed the, the culture around the professional game specifically and how um, uh, we are looking at our pathways. As I said, we do have some positive evidence around some of the boys' pathway data uh, that is uh, following the imposition of both male and female talent managers at ECB, which we didn't previously have, which we now do. Um, as I said, there is a huge focus on this, Mr Efford, from uh, the ECB. It does take time to trickle through the network, and I believe this is where we need help. Uh, to enable our network to, uh, to reflect the accountability the ECB has and feels in this space. Um, with uh, the control to impose it. My last question is, because others want to come in, and this is the, this term, Kevin, uh, the racist use of the, the name Kevin. And it has been alleged that that is widespread, not just used in Yorkshire, but has, at the elite level, uh, has been in, 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 in common use. Is the, has the ECB been made aware of the use of Kevin as a, as a racist term at, uh, at senior level or any other racist incidents that have been reported to it that haven't been acted on? Well, <coughs> the first time I became at the, the slur was in the reading report. Um, uh, so we, it will now form part of the ECB investigation. Uh, and of course it will be dealt with in the same way that all allegations are being dealt with through that, um, through that investigation. But um, uh, so I had not heard of that statement before I read the report. What will you do if you find that England players are using this phrase? Well, no, you're, you're the chief executive. Well, we have a, you know, but this is really important that um, we have a regulatory process which will, yeah. which has with it a, um, a report which will go to the cricket discipline committee. You were fairly quick to ban Ollie Robinson. Well, we were, and that's yes. because we had to. Um, so, someone, for example, uh, using uh, this particular phraseology because they don't wish to pronounce the, the proper names of, of individuals, and then, for example. Uh, uh, jokingly, as a, a black dog that they name after this. Well, what should happen to them? Are they someone well, basically you want in the England team? To, to my, no, of course not, Mr. Knight. And I, I would say this: that the difference between the allegation that you're alleging and the Ollie Robinson situation is one of them was wearing an England shirt at the time. Yeah, he was also and 14 or 15 years old when he made the the, the particular comments, and right. this person was not. 18. 18. 18. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, Kevin Brennan. Thank you, Chair. The Cindy Butt Independent Commission on Equity in Cricket, um, will the ECB commit to uh, introduce uh, its findings when it, when it reports? Uh, 
Um, the action plan we have committed to listening, understanding, and implementing recommendations that are made. So you are committed to implement Correct, the recommendations yes. that come out of that report. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hutton, earlier on, um, I asked him, has the ECB um, done enough to combat racism? He said no. And then he went on to um, talk about the fact that he wished that the ECB had conducted the report uh, into, into Yorkshire Cricket Club. Um, was he wrong to say he hadn't done enough on racism? You've er eradicated racism from the sport. I don't think anyone can say you've done enough. It's a scourge on sport, let alone cricket. It's a scourge on society. And we are taking uh, the steps that we've set out today, whether that is around uh, governance reform, uh, whether it's about introducing the ICEC, whether it's about launching the anti-discrimination code, whether it's okay. sanctions against Yorkshire, okay. or whether it's about now launching the... So, EDI so your answer, basically, you can never do enough to combat racism. I agree, subject. yes, I think that is so the, the, the Can I just... Go back to this, this uh, the, the report itself and the process that was conducted at Yorkshire Cricket Club and the ECBs involved in that. Just to check, did you, were you aware of what was going on around the, the change in the way that the terms of reference of that report was, uh, was changed halfway through so that the uh, panel you know, was going to take it upon itself to report institutional racism and not allow those investigators to make a, ref, uh, make a determination on that? Were you aware of that? I was not aware, no. Would it be fair to say that effectively what you did here is you sanctioned a process by which, by which Yorkshire Cricket Club were going to produce a report which you were then going to overlook as a regulator? That's really what you... Not told. overlook, uh, take judgment on. Take judgment as a regulator. And yet this was a process which Yorkshire Cricket Club were able to and did in fact for a long period of time, possibly until this committee intervened, withhold that report from your site. How do you sanction a process where someone's going to produce a report which you are then going to pass judgment on when it's a process that allows them to actually withhold the report from your site? As I think we've said before, we've learned lessons from this. I don't think there was anything wrong in allowing Yorkshire to do their report. It wasn't right for us to intervene but, but in order that we could regulate. But Mr Dickinson, you didn't say to them at the time, if you're going to do this, if you're going to do the report, you must show it to us. We so we can do our job as a regulator. The report to be completed within three months, and we expect you to have sight of it thereafter. Clearly, today, our process would not be to just let them do a report. We would do a report ourselves, an investigation ourselves as well. You were sold a pup, basically, weren't you? We trusted you, and we were let down. Right. So, that Yorkshire Cricket Club, not only have we found out today from their former chair, is institutionally racist but it's also an untrustworthy organisation whose, who, whose word can't be trusted. Is that what you're telling us? I think the handling of the report, the handling of it, indicates there are some, some certain issues around institutional racism at Yorkshire, the handling of the report. I would agree with that. The content? Content, surely. I think the content talks to culture and the culture of the game, which is... You know, needs to be okay. thoroughly dealt with across more dressing rooms than just the Yorkshire County Cricket Club, as, as we've heard through testimony this afternoon. Just to be clear, when Mr Hutton said earlier on, when he, he assented to the proposition that Yorkshire is an institutionally racist organisation, are you agreeing with that or not agreeing with that? I'm saying that the handling of the... Of the I, I heard you say that just now, but I'm, not asking, I'm asking whether you agree with what Mr Hutton said, that, that he, when he agreed that he felt that Yorkshire was cricket, I think I asked him, is Yorkshire County Cricket Club institutionally racist? And he ultimately said yes. Do you agree with that? I, I agree that the handling of the report indicates issues around That's, institutional uh, racism. You know, That's you're, as far now, as I'm prepared to you're obviously not going to answer my question as to whether you agree with what Mr Hutton said. You either agree with him or you don't agree with him. And I, I understand what you said about the culture of it. You don't agree with him, do you? That it's I, I, that's I think, what you're saying. As I said, I think the handling of the report speaks to institutional yeah. racism. I think a reasonable person would determine for that exchange that you don't fully agree with Mr Hutton. And would I be wrong to draw that conclusion? I think I've made my position. Okay. Yeah, just finally, Chair, because I don't want to go on forever, but Essex <coughs> started a sergeant investigation now, is that correct? into the, the accusations. So do you abandon yours now or suspend yours in the meantime while they do theirs 
And have you got a commitment from, from them that they'll actually show it to you when they finish their report? We, we, we won't abandon ours. Uh, we, we welcome them also taking responsibility for looking into the matter because they have responsibilities. Uh, as an so employer. there's going to be two we, competing we, we, reports produced? Not, not competing. They are looking into it as an employer. It's a, different, um, it's a different role that they play, but we will carry out our role as regulator regardless of their investigation as an employer. I see. So there is an obvious question. What, is, what if their conclusions disagree with your conclusions? So that won't, so we, we, we will have two, um, there will be two roles we will play here. Well, there's two things we will be looking into. The allegations that have been made, and we will come to a judgment on that. But we also will look at the way they handle matters. And if they mishandle matters, that will be subject to a separate disciplinary process. So if they come to a different conclusion in a way that shows mishandling. So it's, it's, it's less about the conclusion and more the, about the way they handle the matter. So if they mishandle this matter, they will also be subject to a regulatory process, not just in relation to the allegations, but the way they dealt with them. Okay, well, we can unpack that later. I think the chair has to pull stumps and swap. Pass Very well, no, we've got Alex Davis-Jones coming in as last man. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I will be brief because I know we are short on time. Um, Mr Harrison, do you see this as a watershed moment for the sport? Absolutely, I do. Then how do we make real change here and stop these initiatives that Mr Rafiq mentioned, such as the South Asian Action Plan, the Inspiring a Generation Report, the plans to tackle misogyny, homophobia, racism? How do we stop this being tokenistic? Well, I think it comes down to results and accountability, doesn't it? And uh, Azim also spoke of that. Uh, I think... Uh, the ECB would welcome the accountability uh, to achieve the results that um, this committee and others expect um, us to do. We want to lead this and we, there are times uh, when we need to, uh, through consultation and debate, uh, uh, consult with our game and then come back with answers and there are times where frankly the ECB needs to lead uh, and be able to, uh, to have a degree of control and uh, that won't be a popular comment uh, in the first class network but I believe in this case it is absolutely fundamental to our ability to remain relevant as a sport to our changing environment uh, and to send a clear message about, first of all, uh, are we cricket, uh, is cricket a game for everyone? Are we serious when we make strategic comments about that we fully believe in, uh, about uh, driving policy towards uh, accessibility, towards uh, openness, transparency and all of um, the work that we uh, have done through Inspiring Generations, which although it, it, it is, uh, it's been maligned at certain points, it is an excellent strategic visionary document um, that sets out what cricket should look like um, for communities but, in this country. But it hasn't worked, has it? Because well, we're in year two of five, and, and all I'd say is that it, it is the right plan. It just clearly needs, and, and look, uh, and again, I've heard the hope come through this committee today. I've heard it in every witness statement that we've heard this afternoon. I have heard an element of hope that we can use this to bring community leaders to, uh, to, to help us, to bring uh, people from different communities that have felt maligned, that have felt they can't speak, that have felt there's a lack of trust with the cricket authorities in this country. I think all of the measures that we've talked about today, such as, I know we keep going back to it, but the Commission for Equity in Cricket gives people an external venting opportunity the hotlines that are being, going to be set up across the country. Well, These are all opportunities for us to bring the game together you, and move forward. You mentioned the hotlines, and uh, in your own words, you've anticipated an explosion of complaints following um, the whistleblowing of Mr Rafiq. Are you resourced enough? What actual resource and funding are you giving to this to make sure that you can cope with the, amount, with the explosion of complaints? Right. And how are these going to be dealt with? Well, I think you can take it from me that this will be a properly resourced and properly funded element of our, um, of our, our business. Okay, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Yeah. And what we heard this morning uh, from Azim Rafi was that he wants this game to get better yeah. on the issue of racism. You know, rest assured, ECB absolutely shares that. We have a meeting on Friday with the whole game, and I personally am very sure that the whole game will want to come together to see action to get to where we need to be. Okay. Um, and finally, because I know we, we are short on time, but watching this today has been incredibly harrowing, being in the room, but I know there's, there's thousands of people across the UK who've been watching this who, who love the game and um, want to support the game, but are being extremely disappointed by um, 
cricket and the game as, as it currently is. What do you say to that? And, and what do you say to people whose impression of cricket now is up on the floor? I say, uh, please understand that we're really sorry for what the experiences that you may have been through, through trying to engage in cricket in this country. We know we've let you down and we, will, we are going to fix this and we're going to fix it quickly and we're going to fix it fast because the survival of our sport depends on it and it's absolutely at the core of the ECB and we will work you know, endlessly to ensure that very quickly that message is received throughout our network uh, and we will transform this game very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, finally, finally. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, I just wanted to come in because it's something I was going to ask earlier but I thought I was running out of time. But, uh, and it's on the uh, sanction that you've taken out against Yorkshire Cricket and taken away the, uh, the, the test match. Um, I mean, I wonder what uh, sanction you've got open to you now if you're in, in the light of your investigations now that you've done that. But is it, is it the intention of the ECB to use uh, uh, the um, major cricketing events as leverage to make sure that cricket, county cricket clubs um, adhere to your anti-discrimination code and, uh, and adopt whatever recommendations come out of your commission's report? Uh, categorically, yes. Absolutely, we will. It's, um, and just to explain your earlier point about what other um, opportunities we have to impose sanctions through the disciplinary and regulatory process. Mina, do you just want to cover that off quickly? We do. So, as, as we've covered, we've got the regulatory role, and that is what we're doing with the investigation, and the sanctions for that will be delivered by an by a independent cricket discipline commission. But uh, as, as, well as, as well as that, as Mr Harrison has set out, we're also the promoter and there are sanctions that we can bring to bear through that. So the major matches that you have referred to also funded through our county partnership agreement. So there, there are different ways in which ECB can bring sanctions to bear on the counties in relation to this area. Thank you. Mr Harrison, one final one from me. Um, Colin Graves, the Graves Trust and its relationship with Yorkshire. Many people outside of the game don't quite understand exactly the way in which that they have Yorkshire at the palm of their hand because basically they've got the debt. And the trustees and their role in this debacle and the fact that they, according to Mr Hutton, they were a roadblock to reform of the board and changes at Yorkshire. What are you going to do about that trust and its relationship with Yorkshire? Because that appears to me to be desperately unhealthy for the game. So one of the uh, sanctions that... Uh, we were asked to commission, we, uh, we held, that we handed down to Yorkshire um, a couple of weeks ago was that the ECB's exec executive had been asked by the board, uh, by the ECB board, uh, to commission a governance review of uh, Yorkshire County Cricket Club. So uh, I think all of that will get caught up in, uh, in that governance review, uh, which we will uh, make available to this committee. And do you recognise that it's a, pro it's a potentially a major problem? I do. Yeah. Thank you. That concludes our session today. Thank you very much for your evidence. Order, order.